We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Anderson County this morning. Authorities tell us a man who was reported missing and believed to be in danger has now been found dead. Investigators say 35 year old Philip Huey's body was found last night along Cox Lake Road in Belton. The coroner says he was found with multiple traumatic injuries. The coroner also believes the body had been at that location for several days. His death has been ruled a homicide and an autopsy has been scheduled. The coroner and deputies are still investigating. Anyone with information is asked to call the Anderson County Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers. Right now in Spartanburg County, deputies in the coroner's office are investigating a deadly shooting. They say it happened at Upstate Co-Living Apartments on College Point Lane. We're told they found a man shot on the sidewalk. No other details have been released, but we'll bring you updates as the story develops. A new report shows hundreds of bridges in South Carolina are in need of repair. Federal Highway Administration data shows more than 1900 of almost 10,000 bridges across the state need attention. The data also shows which counties have the most bridges in need of repair. Now, uh, the Greenville County tops that list with about 45 bridges that are qualified as being in poor condition. Spartanburg County comes in a close second with 40 bridges in poor condition. As of June of this year, officials say the state has committed more than $33 million towards 16 bridge repair projects. Meanwhile, the Blue Ridge Parkway brought in more than $1 billion for the local economy last year. That's according to a new report from the National Park Service. The Blue Ridge Parkway stretches 469 miles through 29 North Carolina and Virginia counties. The report says in 2022, more than 15 million people visited and spent nearly $1.3 billion in communities near the park. The National Park Service says that spending also supported more than 17,000 jobs in the surrounding areas. At 6.53, a Greenville pastor is back from Europe after giving a sermon fit for a king. Reverend Dr. Richard Gibbons is a senior pastor at First Presbyterian Church of Greenville. Last weekend, he and his wife joined King Charles III and Queen Camilla at the Balmoral Castle in Scotland. Reverend Gibbons was a guest preacher at Craigie Parish Church. He says he received the invitation back in November and was very impressed by the king's hospitality. It is one of those light, once in a lifetime experiences, but as I said earlier, surreal and strange all at the same time. Her sure, body clock is not quite adjusted to South Carolina again. When I woke up this morning, I nudged Ruth and I said to her, I've just had the strangest dream that we were in Scotland all weekend and we met the King. <laughs> Reverend Gibbons was also the guest chaplain to the US Senate in July. Some animals at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro are making a move to Greenville. The zoo says its flock of 15 flamingos will relocate in late September, joining the 19 flamingos at the Greenville Zoo. That's because the NC Zoo is demolishing its aviary, which closed last year. The zoo is hoping for funding to rebuild a new aviary, but doesn't know if the flamingos will be part of those plans. Zoo officials think it'll be a smooth transition because flamingos are social and they'll get to be part of a larger flock in Greenville. The Greenville Zoo also has a large lagoon for the birds. A farewell flamingos event will be held at the NC Zoo this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And guests are encouraged to wear pink to honor the birds. <laughs> All right, speaking of sporting clothes, uh, Spartanburg Fashion Week is coming up on October 11th through the 15th. Each day will feature a different event, starting with the Fashion Icon Cocktail Party. There will also be a scavenger hunt, including downtown Spartanburg businesses. While there will be more than one runway event, it ends with the grand finale red carpet event that Sunday. The events will showcase different talents, designs, and emerging fashion trends. All right, time now for a final check on the roads. Here's Hannah. Good morning. As you head out the door this morning, we are still watching that wreck on I-26 in North Carolina where all that construction is. So it's going to take a while to clean up and it's going to cause delays in that area because of the construction. So let's leave at 10 to 15 minutes early if you head out the door in this direction, unfortunately causing slowdowns. Hey, look at this. I-85, normal slowdowns right there at Highway 14. In some areas, we're moving at 31 miles per hour and others about 15. But as you continue southbound from Highway 101 to Highway 14, it's really just Highway 14 that you're going to run into those slowdowns. And then you're going to make your way just fine from there to the gateway. That drive time is a little bit impacted. We're at nine minutes. We usually like to see that at six. Perella. 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday at 655. It's going to be warm today, but not as sweltering as it has been. So good news there. We're going to get into the upper 80s. That's for Greenville and the upstate. We're back in the low 90s tomorrow. We'll get into the mid 90s for Friday, Saturday. And yes, we are going to see some of those isolated showers finally come back to the area. It's not going to be widespread. It's not going to be a washout. Not everybody gets wet, but I'll tell you, it's going to be nice to finally have at least a chance for some of those rain showers coming back into the area. What's happening is we've got a cold front that's going to come through that will cool us down heading into Sunday and Monday and even Tuesday. By the way, Wednesday looks to be cooler than average. And on Wednesday, we do have a chance of some of those spotty showers for everyone again as well.